ramen, one of Japan's favorite foods. This annual gathering in Tokyo of the finest ramen shops from around Japan draws huge crowds. And the popularity of ramen is going global. A Japanese comfort food, winning hearts and appealing to palates around the world. The ramen business itself, meanwhile, is extremely competitive. This time on Japanology Plus, our subject is ramen. We'll look at the secrets behind this food's deep appeal. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus. I'm Peter Barakan. This place I'm standing is a museum dedicated to ramen. It's in Yokohama where the first specialist ramen shop is said to have opened over 100 years ago. This museum is actually celebrating its 20th anniversary at the moment. Japan is a land of relentless modernization, but as soon as you walk in here, you're transported back in time to what I imagine Yokohama probably looked like back in the 1950s. They have exhibits here which will show you things about the history of ramen and also there's a number of shops that serve ramen in its various regional varieties. As I'm sure some people are aware, ramen is recently becoming an internationally popular dish. I'm told that in places like New York, people will actually dress up to go out and eat it, which all seems a little strange to me because my own image of ramen has always been the quintessential late night snack on the run for inebriated office workers. Let's start off today with a look at some of the recent developments in ramen. Japanese people of all ages love ramen. Broth, noodles and toppings are the three elements of a bowl of ramen. But within that basic framework, there is almost endless variation. The flavor of the ramen is determined by the broth. Ramen broth can be made from a wide range of ingredients, such as pork and chicken bones, fresh, dried and processed seafood, and more. Each ramen shop has its own unique recipe. Then come the noodles. There are curly noodles and straight noodles, fat ones and thin ones. Noodle recipes also vary from shop to shop. Popular toppings include slices of roast pork and a boiled egg. Ramen may also feature various vegetables and local specialties. Broth, noodles, toppings. By combining these three in their multiple variations, you get almost endless ramen creativity. Across Japan, there are about 80,000 eateries offering ramen. And about 800 billion yens worth of ramen is served each year. There's also instant ramen. More than 5 billion packages are produced annually. This 10-day event, the Tokyo Ramen Show, features regional variations from all over Japan. It draws 400,000 ramen fans, all in search of the perfect bowl. OK, let me now introduce you to our guest on today's program, Mr. Hiroshi Osaki, whose business card claims that he's eaten more ramen than anybody else in Japan. Osaki-san, thank you for being with us today. And My pleasure. I understand that you travel all over Japan in pursuit of ramen and that you eat something like 800 bowls a year? That's right. Over the last 17 years, about seven to 800 bowls per year. I often have three bowls at lunch. Then I'll have something different for dinner. Basically, those are my daily eating habits. Hiroshi Osaki is the director of the Nippon Ramen Association. Even as a boy, he would go to local shops to sample the ramen. Since then, he's eaten 22,000 bowls of ramen. 
Nine years ago, he started sharing information gleaned from his ramen crawls on a blog. He became known as a ramen guru. Osaki also serves on the steering committee for the Tokyo Ramen Show, the biggest event of its kind, which showcases ramen from all over Japan. Today, Osaki runs Japan's leading ramen information website. He's one of the best known ramen experts there is. Well, we've got quite a little selection of different kinds of ramen here. I'm not an expert, but Osaki san is. Now, you're going to have to talk me through what all these are and where they come from. Let's start in the north of Japan. This is miso ramen from Sapporo. There's a film of oil on the top that seals in the miso broth below. The noodles are very curly. They're also very firm in texture. And now where do we go? This is Hakata ramen from the southwest. It uses a creamy pork-based broth. The broth has a distinctive whitish color. The skinny noodles go with this broth very well. This is called skimen and it comes from Tokyo. It's a bit different, the noodles come separately. You dip the noodles in the broth before eating them. The history of ramen goes back about 100 years, but skimen is about 60 years old and has only become really popular nationwide over the past decade. And imagine for a long time, most of these regional varieties would have only been eaten by people in that particular area. In the past, only locals ate their regional variation of ramen. Then a lot of shops in that area started serving it. Then, through word of mouth, visitors started coming to eat it. It's the same as with other tourist attractions like temples and shrines. Word gets out that an area has a special kind of ramen, and then people want to go there and try it. Well, OK, I can Im imagine people going out on a trip to see a famous shrine or temple. I mean, it's a, a piece of architecture, you know, dating back hundreds and hundreds of years. But ramen is, you know, it's a fairly cheap um, kind of food. I mean, the, the fact that people would actually spend money to go on a trip just to eat ramen is quite amazing, really. Well, in addition to the ramen, it's about the look of the shop, the atmosphere, the people who are working there. The fact is very widely from place to place. In that sense, these are tourist spots. These ramen tours are part of what makes ramen so much fun. So th there's actually ramen tours now. Good Lord. Ramen these days, of course, is known as a Japanese food, and uh, even outside Japan, people think of it as Japanese food, I think, now. Originally, though, of course, it comes from China. Yes, ramen is said to have come from China in 1872. Japan's first specialist ramen shop opened in 1910, so just over 100 years ago. In China, it was all about the noodles. They're the focus of attention. In Japan, of course, people enjoy the noodles, but it's the broth that takes the most time and money. Often it's simmered for 15 or 20 hours. In China, they actually call this kind of cuisine Japanese-style ramen. Why is Japanese ramen so appealing? Here's one popular kind, soy sauce-flavored ramen. The broth, made from chicken bones and dried sardine, is paired with thin, homemade noodles. The key to delicious ramen is a very tasty broth. Let's take a closer look at how the broth is made. Chickens are placed in a pot of boiling water. Eventually, a layer of yellowish liquid forms on the surface. This is oil from the chicken. Then everything is simmered on low heat for three hours. The murky liquid turns clear and the oil from the chicken forms a thick layer. The broth is ready. The broth has separated into two layers. The upper yellowish layer is oil with a mellow aroma. The clear liquid below is rich with the umami of the chicken. Recent culinary research has revealed that the mixture of these two elements, 
the aroma and the umami gives ramen the unique depth of flavor that people love. When the broth is poured into the bowl, the layers of oil and broth are still separated. Then the noodles are added, mingling with the broth. The surface layer of oil turns into countless tiny globules. The globules vary in size. The small ones are about a millimeter across. Some globules of oil float down to the clear broth below and cling to the noodles. This creates a good mixture of the tasty broth and the aromatic oil. When the broth is drunk, the savor and aroma create a deep, satisfying flavor. Ramen noodles themselves have interesting characteristics. When a noodle is taken from the broth and pressed with a thin rod, drops of liquid form on the surface. This is broth that has been absorbed by the noodles. For comparison, here's an udon noodle. A sticky surface layer peels away, but that's it. Because ramen noodles are made using brine, they absorb liquid more readily. When you bite into ramen noodles, broth oozes out. That's a taste sensation unique to ramen. And there's more. Take a look at a cross-section of a ramen noodle. The outer section, where the broth has soaked in, looks translucent, but a white core remains. This indicates that the noodles are not soggy. They're still firm. Ramen noodles are both juicy and chewy. It's a big part of what makes ramen unique. The texture of the noodles and the flavor of the broth combine to make ramen a distinctively delicious treat. It's a simple dish, but there really is a lot of depth to it. There's, um, you've got your soup and your noodles and just a few toppings, but I don't know quite what it is, but it really is something special about this, isn't it? I'm sure, Osaki-san, you must have the same problem. You're going to slurp it, and there's no way you can stop the soup from getting on your clothes. What do you do? When I'm eating a bowl of ramen, I don't worry about it. I just slurp. Obviously, your cleaning bill goes up, but it's worth it. <laughs> I bet. But there's a real depth to it, and what is it that gives it so much flavor? In one single bowl, you really get a multi-course meal. There are all the different kinds of toppings. They're your appetizers. The broth is a soup, and the noodles are the main course. You polish up the last drop, and the meal ends. It's quite a rich experience. The broth is very hot when the ramen is first served, but as it gradually cools, the flavor changes. Japanese-style broth becomes even tastier at low temperatures. You can enjoy the changing flavor profile as you eat. Okay. I actually think of eating ramen as a form of entertainment. For me, the ramen shop kitchen is a stage. Each cook has their own way of making ramen, and the focal point is shaking the water off the noodles. It's a real performance. There's a variation in that one element. Some cooks make a little movement like this, but some really shake it hard. Some even spin it around in the air. It's fun to watch while you're waiting for your ramen. Obviously, I mean, you have your blog and you write about ramen a lot. To relate the taste of something in, in, in words is quite difficult, really. 
How do you go about it? I give my honest impression of what I ate, but it's not enough just to say it was delicious. I have to be specific. Was the broth light or heavy? Was it thick or thin? Are the noodles curly or straight? And when they slide between your lips, do they feel smooth or springy or what? I use a lot of onomatopoeia, vivid expressions. What do you think it is about ramen that makes Japanese people enjoy it so much? It's just one bowl, but there are unlimited possibilities in terms of variety. The broth could be soy sauce, salt, miso, pork or chicken by tang, recently even tomato, curry and other exotic broths. And of course people have different tastes. One person prefers soy sauce broth, another prefers salt broth. It's fun to discuss and debate. Everyone pretty much agrees which French or Italian restaurants are the best, but with ramen, one might say that place is the best, while someone else might say, I don't like that ramen at all, this place is better. I hear a lot of conversations like that in the pub. There are ramen shops all over the place, and unless you're an expert, it's quite hard to know which are the ones you want to go for, which is a good ramen shop, which is not such a good one. Are there ways that you can tell? Yes. Pay attention to the smell wafting out of the door as you walk past. If it smells good, that's one good sign. Also, first impressions are important, same as with people. A ramen shop exterior is what creates that first impression. For example, whether the curtain at the entrance is clean or not. Details like that are important. But my top recommendation is that you look at the faces of the people who are walking out of the ramen shop after eating there. You can always tell when someone's just had a great meal by the look on their face. If a lot of people are walking out looking happy, that's a great way to know that the food is good, no mistake. Matt Alt is a translator from the US with an interest in everything Japanese, from history to pop culture. In Plus One, he presents practical tips you can use yourself. I'm Matt Alt, and today I'm here to walk you through how to eat ramen the right way. This is a ticket machine. You'll see them at nearly any ramen shop in Japan. But look at all of these buttons. And what do you do if you don't speak Japanese? No problem. Japan's top noodle experts tell me that if you pick the button on the upper left corner, you'll never go wrong. Well, here we have it, a steaming, piping hot bowl of ramen. So we should just dig right in, right? Wrong. The proper technique here is to first stir the noodles gently, lovingly, so as to break up the oils and release the aromatic compounds of the soup. Well, now that we've mixed the noodles, we can dig right in, right? Wrong. The proper move here is to first sample and savor the soup. Gently lower your spoon into the broth, allowing it to fill the ladle, then just as gently and lovingly, lift it to your lips. Excellent. We've mixed the noodles and we've savored the soup. So now we can finally dig into these wonderful smelling noodles. Now in Japan, the proper way of eating these noodles is to slurp them. I know this might sound like bad manners abroad, but here in Japan, it's perfectly all right. In fact, it's considered the best way to appreciate ramen because by sucking air into your mouth, it allows more flavors to come out. Now, I'm gonna admit something here. I've been living in Japan for 10 years, and this is my first time ever slurping ramen noodles. Now, for those of you who might not be up on your slurping method, let's give you a quick rundown of how it's done. First, you pull the noodles out of the bowl, and then you form an O with your mouth. The better to suck in air along with the noodles. Here, let's give it a try. Umai, as we say in Japanese. 
That wasn't nearly as hard as I was expecting it was gonna be. And of course, it wouldn't do to forget the toppings, such as the chashu pork and the minma cooked bamboo shoots. You can eat those pretty much any time you like, which for me is all the time. Mmm. Mmm. Another reason for all the slurping is speed, because the longer you leave the ramen noodles sitting in the broth, the soggier they get. And trust me, nobody likes a soggy ramen noodle. So now you know the basics of Japanese noodle slurping. Give it a try next time you hit the ramen shops. Maybe you'll be a ramen master yourself. This ramen shop is in the Machida area of Tokyo. The queue stretches out the door. The ramen here features a creamy, mild broth made with seafood and pork bones and thin, straight noodles. The ramen recipe was developed by Rie Nozu, the shop owner. Making ramen involves a lot of tough physical work and is not a profession chosen by many women. There was one ramen cook who said to me, you know, women have biorhythms. Their bodies and emotions are always in flux. That's why they can't make a consistent bowl of ramen, things like that. So I decided that I would make ramen and a ramen shop my own way, in a way that old guys like that never could. Nozu decided to target the largely overlooked potential of female ramen consumers. She spent more than 10 years developing a recipe for a broth that would appeal to women. She simmers it for 12 hours, adding water and stirring it every 30 minutes. The broth is refrigerated to fix its savory flavor. Also, at low temperatures, the oil solidifies and it can then be removed to create a less oily broth. This broth is carefully reheated in individual portions for each order. The noodles also have a lot of thought behind them. For those who are watching their calorie intake, she developed noodles made from konyaku, a type of root vegetable, and noodles made with soy milk. Healthy recipes have proved popular. These days, almost half of Nozu's customers are women. It's less oily and quite light, tasty and easy to eat. Her ramen is not the only way Nozu has won over female diners. She also put thought into the shop's design. You can see the inside of the shop clearly from the street. And the employees of the shop are all women. This makes it easier for women who want to dine alone to step inside. She also provides paper aprons to avoid the problem of broth flying onto clothing and hairbands for keeping long hair out of the way. From day one, Nozu has been trying to perfect an experience that will appeal particularly to women. She's a trailblazer in the world of ramen, where both cooks and customers are mostly men. When I see a woman slurp up every bit of broth straight from the bowl, rather than use her ladle, or have a repeat customer say to me, I've come back because last time it was so delicious. Those kind of things make me very happy. I'm humbled and so grateful to my wonderful customers. I'd always had the image of ramen as being something that overwhelmingly men eat. And obviously there's been quite a large change there. What, what do you think is responsible for that? 
There have always been women who like ramen, but many were put off by the dinginess of ramen shops or by seeing only men inside. Of course, ramen shops would be happy to draw more women. More customers means more sales. And the way many shops are doing that is by making their interiors more tidy and stylish. Shops have made a lot of effort like that, which has led to more and more women going to eat ramen. Recently, uh, ramen has been becoming more and more popular around the world outside Japan, and not only in Asia either, in Europe and in America as well. How do you see the future of ramen? Do you think there is still room for it to grow? If we look at history, pasta has been around for 700 years, soba for 400. Ramen is only 100 years old. If pasta is a grandfather, ramen is still a child, one with plenty of growing to do. It's a food that's still on its way up. That's how I see it. When I think about the potential creative progress, I wish I could eat the ramen of a hundred years from now. Can you imagine in any kind of way how it will be different from what it is now a hundred years ahead? I think we'll have things like short noodles, flat noodles. There'll be more noodle variations and the broth. Today we have miso salt, soy sauce, pork and newcomers like tomato broth. Now we even have pineapple ramen. Wow. In 10 or 20 years, there'll be ramen we can't even imagine. I'm really looking forward to that. One change that I would kind of like to see happen is, I mean, as we talked about earlier on, in Japan you slurp your noodles and they taste much better when you do that. But just about everywhere around the world people don't do that and it's kind of a shame, it seems to me. And it'd be nice to be able to teach the world to slurp, if you like. Uh, I think that would be one change that I would like to see happen. Yes, I agree. It's a distinctive Japanese thing and I hope people will understand that and do it our way when eating ramen, even if it's bad manners for other foods. Thank you very much. Next time, Mount Fuji. Constantly changing with the passing seasons, Japan's tallest peak has for centuries inspired religious devotion and some of the nation's greatest art.